Hello friends. More than 3 million monkeys attacked the city, causing more than $10 billion in damage to the economy. They attacked the city, destroying infrastructure and attacking people. To deal with baboons, people have implemented some control measures. Join me to find out in the following video. First, are you curious about the name of the baboon? Baboons, also known as racist monkeys, originate from Asia. In the US, the state of Florida is home to the largest number of baboons due to individuals escaping from research facilities and experimental camps. Initially, their number in Florida was estimated at a few dozen, but has since increased to millions. Baboons have thick gray or brown fur with a red mark on the bottom. Their average weight is about 1,725 pounds. They are aggressive animals and can be dangerous by attacking other species in the city, especially when they feel threatened or when stealing food. Their sharp fangs are about an inch long. Baboons breed usually in spring and summer when the weather is warm. Each time they reproduce, they usually give birth to one to three cubs. They are omnivores, their food includes fruits and small animals. They live in large herds. They have a clear hierarchy and follow the leadership of the alpha male. Baboons are highly adaptable to diverse habitats, from jungles to grasslands and even urban areas, They are attacking the city of Florida, roaming the main roads causing traffic congestion. This not only affects the mobility of residents but also delays public projects and businesses. They target traffic participants, especially car drivers, posing serious injury risks to them. Attacking vehicles on the road is either for food or due to their instinct to search for new habitats. However, the damage doesn't stop there. They boldly live on people's rooftops, damaging infrastructure and personal property. Invading homes to search for food causes significant losses to the local economy. Estimated annual damages in Florida amount to billions of USD, encompassing repair costs. This has sparked unease and worry within the community, negatively impacting people's mental well-being. Moreover, they not only pilfer food from human residences but also ravage food sources throughout the city. This behavior directly affects environmental hygiene, polluting water sources. It could lead to serious environmental and public health issues, further burdening government agencies and environmental protection organizations. To deal with this aggressive animal, Florida people have deployed hunting activities. Hunters often choose locations far from residential areas where baboons often visit, convenient for hunting. Before starting, local people often prepare large amounts of food such as tomatoes and oranges to attract baboons. Then, the hunter will prepare his bow and arrow. In Florida, hunters often use highly accurate bows and arrows to precisely target their prey.
While hunting, hunters often choose well-covered locations to avoid being detected by baboons. They will wait until the baboons appear at a suitable distance before taking them down. The common bow used for baboon hunting is the compound bow, known for its accuracy and powerful shooting ability at distances of 20 to 30 feet. Hunters often aim at the head or neck area to take them down. Each hunting trip can catch from four to five baboons, depending on the hunter's skill and weather conditions. The use of bows and arrows is an effective measure to reduce the proliferation of baboons and protect the natural environment, as well as people's livelihoods. However, the use of pythons must be closely monitored to ensure that it does not adversely affect humans and the surrounding animal species. The issue of monkey invasions in the state of Florida remains a significant concern. Although control measures have been implemented, there are still large areas where they can roam freely and cause problems for the community. To address this issue, there needs to be close cooperation between government agencies, the public and environmental protection organizations. But I don't support the use of bows and arrows to control baboons. I believe this method is inhumane and harms them. What do you think about this approach? Comment 1 if you also disagree with the use of bows and arrows. In my opinion, methods such as sterilization or relocating them to wildlife conservation areas are more humane and sustainable approaches to addressing the issue. Besides addressing the risk to humans, we also need to consider the existence and rights of animal species, including baboons. Dealing with their invasion requires careful consideration of countermeasures while respecting their lives and freedom. Please comment on number one if you find this video interesting. Comment zero if you like Florida's response to invasive baboons. Thank you for watching the entire video. Like and subscribe to the channel to watch the next videos. The surge in deer populations in the United States has created a series of challenges for farmers and the environment. Deers are herbivores. They gnaw on many different types of plants, from grass to trees and crops. Every year, they often appear in fields creating a great threat to the crops. Invasive deers can cause about $1.5 billion in damage each year to the U.S. farms. According to estimates by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, this damage includes not only damage to crops, but also affects the infrastructure and the livestock. approximately 30 million deer in the United States. The population is growing rapidly, creating enormous pressure on the ecosystem and economy. Uncontrolled growth causes growing challenges. All the times. Invasive deers not only reduce crop yields, but also increase agricultural production costs Farmers face constant challenges in protecting their crops and assets. Deers excrete feces and urine directly in the fields, causing environmental pollution. This can affect water and soil quality, creating a worrying environmental problem.
Overall, managing deer populations becomes increasingly important to minimize damage and maintain a balance between humans, animals, and the environment. Deers can become aggressive when threatened or when protecting their children. This creates a particular danger for children and the elderly. Deers' attacks can cause injuries and death. As we enter the 21st century, we are facing an unexpected challenge to traffic safety in the United States. Deers cause traffic accidents. The situation becomes dangerous when deers not only invade residential areas, but are also causing many traffic accidents. According to statistics from the U.S. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, referred to as the NHTSA, each year there are about 200,000 traffic accidents caused by deers, with a significant number of death injuries. This not only creates a dangerous situation for traffic safety, but also causes a huge financial waste for the community. The estimated economic loss due to traffic accidents caused by deers each year is about $1.1 billion. This cost includes vehicle repairs, medical care, and insurances. Deer's hunting is a popular activity in the United States, especially in rural areas. Hunters often choose areas with many deers, such as forests, grasslands, and farms, to begin their adventures. The hunting process takes place by hunters searching for deers and using hunting tools. If the deer is not dead after the first shot, the hunter will continue until it's dead. Daytime hunting offers many advantages such as better visibility, increased success rates, and a diverse selection of hunting methods. In the United States, many states such as New York, Pennsylvania, Illinois, and Texas offers daytime hunting licenses. However, regulations can vary from a state to another, so hunters should check carefully before setting out. Daytime deer hunting is not only a sport, but also provides unique recreational experiences bringing participants closer to nature and at the same time enjoying the fresh air of the countryside. Night deer hunting in the United States is an effective method of controlling deer populations and protecting farmers' crops. Through the use of large headlights, farmers can easily detect and shoot down harmful deers and their fields. The advantages of this method include the deer's poor night vision, making them easier to detect. Farmers can also take advantage of time when deers leave the forest to hunt, helping to minimize damage to crops. However, not all areas in the United States allow night deer hunting. Regulations can vary by state. But typically, it always includes licensing requirements, headlight wattage, shooting distance, and a flashlight use. Although this method brings many benefits, it also has certain risks such as the risk of accidents 
and negative effects on other animals. Therefore, compliance with regulations is important to ensure safety and protect the environment. Night deer hunting is not only a form of entertainment, but also an effective means of managing deer populations. Deer hunting in snowy fields is a popular activity in the United States during the winter. The hunter moves through the snow field, looking for deer tracks, and then uses a rifle to make a hunting shot. This offers many advantages, including being easier for deers to see against the white snow and the ability to reach them more easily. Deer hunting in snowy fields not only provides an enjoyable experience, but also helps control deer populations and maintain natural balance. Licensed in areas with heavy snowfall and large deer populations, the activity requires hunters to comply with specific state regulations. In addition, preparing the right gear for cold weather. Hunters also need to be careful when traveling in the snow and follow state safety regulations. Deer hunting in snowy fields is not only a hobby, but also a responsibility requiring attention and respect for the natural environment. Doing this activity properly will provide a unique experience and protect our natural resources. There are many different ways to deal with invasive deer populations. Now let's go to other areas in the United States to see how farmers are dealing with deer populations. Let's keep watching. According to estimates by the United States Department of Agriculture, there are currently about 2 million wild pigs in Texas, accounting for more than 40% of the total number of wild pigs in the United States. Wild boars, omnivores, are capable of consuming everything from grass, fruit, grains, to small animals and even carrion. This diverse diet is also the source of heavy losses to agriculture and environment in Texas. The USDA estimates that feral hogs cause about $2.5 billion in damage each year to Texas farms, orchards and forests in particular. Crop destruction is the main cause, accounting for a total loss of up to $1.5 billion. In addition to wild boars negatively impacting forests with a total of about $500 million, wild boars are often active at night, attacking farms, orchards, and forests. They prioritize areas with abundant food sources, such as farming areas and forests near residential areas. Each herd of wild pigs is usually 10 to 20 pigs. However, there are also large herds with up to 100 pigs. With their ferocity, they not only attack wild animals, but also threaten people and pits in the area. This poses a major challenge in managing and controlling feral pig populations to protect agriculture and the environment in Texas.
Hunting feral hogs at night in southeast Texas is a popular activity, attracting the interest of many hunters. Wild boars often appear and are active at night, which creates a good opportunity for people who want to challenge themselves in difficult hunting environments. Hunters in the area often apply specialized skills to be successful in hunting wild boars at night. One of the main means is to use hunting dogs, powerful partners that help them search and chase wild boar herds. At the same time, using a flashlight also becomes an important tactic helping hunters see more clearly in the dark and quickly determines the target's location. According to statistics from the Texas Department of Agriculture and Infrastructure, each year about 250,000 wild pigs are hunted in southeast Texas. Of these, about 100,000 are victims of hunting at night, when wild boars' sense of sight helps them skillfully hide in the dark. Night hunting usually takes place from about 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., the time when wild boars are often most active. This is not only an exciting hunting experience, but also an opportunity for hunters to practice unique techniques and enjoy the beauty of nature at night hours. The nighttime wild boars hunt is a fun and exciting event, often held in the south central Texas area. These activities are often hosted by hunting clubs hunting companies, or non-profit organizations. The time to organize these competitions usually takes place in the fall, from October to December, when wild boars begin to store fat to prepare for winter. This is the time when wild boars become healthy and heavy, creating an ideal target for participating in hunting teams. Although the number of feral hogs hunted annually in this area isn't publicly known, according to estimates by Texas Department of Agriculture and Infrastructure, approximately about 250,000 feral hogs are hunted in the Central South Texas every year. Many nighttime wild boar hunting competitions are held, including the Texas Night Wild Boar organized by the Texas Hunting Association every November, taking place at various locations in Texas, including the South Central Texas region, Warriors Night Boar is organized by the nonprofit organization Texas Warriors every October, with locations in the San Antonio area. Additionally, the Armadillo Hunting Club Night Boar is an event hosted by the Armadillo Hunting Club in Atascosa County every November. Participating teams have the opportunity to receive attractive prizes such as cash, physical prizes or both, creating a great incentive.
for competition in these competitions. According to TBWD, an estimated 750,000 feral hogs are hunted in Texas each year. Of these, about half of them to 500,000 of wild boars are hunted by licensed hunters, while about 250,000 are hunted by unlicensed hunters. This highlights the important role of hunting in maintaining a balanced wild boar population and protecting the environment. Night trapping of feral hogs in Texas is a common practice used to control feral hog populations. Wild boar trappers often hunt at night setting traps in areas with the most big population such as farming areas, forests, or places with abundant food and water sources. Check traps regularly, at least once per night. When they discover wild boar trapped, they will wait until morning and harvest. The number of feral swine harvested annually in Texas is estimated by the Texas Department of Agriculture and Infrastructure to be approximately a quarter of a million animals per year. European wild boars sparked a surprising story when they were brought into Canada in the early 1980s. With the hope of opening up a new, unique, and an attractive pork market for tourists. However, this good intention quickly became a dangerous problem when free pigs began to roam the mountains and forests and reproduce at a breakneck speed. According to estimates by the Canadian government, the country's wild boar population has increased from about 100 animals in 1990s to an impressive 1.2 million animals by 2023. Wild boars, being an omnivore, are capable of consuming many different types of foods, from plants, animals, to garbage. This not only poses a threat to the natural environment, but also has become a very heavy problem for the agricultural industry, causing losses of millions of dollars each year. During growing wheat fields, wild boars often invade at night to enjoy the young wheat. The ability to eat tons of wheat in just one night always causes a huge damage to the crop with Canadian government estimates also talking about this damage reaching up to $100 million per year. To control the wild boar's population, the Canadian government has implemented many measures, including hunting, using traps, and even chemical injections. However, this is not easy and requires strong coordination between stakeholders to face the growing challenge of wild boars' populations. Wild boar hunting in Canada to control wild boar populations has become a popular activity since the 1990s, when wild boars' populations began to increase rapidly the Canadian government has issued permits to hunters to reduce the wild boar's numbers and prevent their spread. Hunting in the fields at night has become popular since the 2000s, as wild boars are often active at this time. This method offers many advantages, including being highly effective with an increased likelihood of success, being safer because wild boars are less aggressive during the day, and saving time 
because they are often concentrated in the field during the day and night. The hunter tells of an adventure in an Alberta wheat field, showcasing the thrill and success of shooting down a wild boar one night. On July 20, 2023, a hunter in Canada hunted a giant wild boar weighing more than 500 kilograms. This wild boar is believed to be the largest ever hunted in Canada. The hunter, Mr. Michael, is an experienced hunter in the province of Saskatchewan. He has been involved in wild boar hunting for many years and has killed many wild boars. This action not only brings joy to hunters but also reduces damage to local crops. With an estimated 100,000 wild boars hunted each year. However, the problem is growing. To control the wild boar population, the Canadian government uses a variety of measures, including trapping, chemical injections, and awareness campaigns. However, the challenge requires close cooperation from many stockholders to achieve positive results and protect the communities and the environment. Door traps are an effective means of collecting wild boars, operating by activating a spring-loaded latch when the wild boar steps inside. The spring latch is designed to collapse the door, making an effective wild boar capture mechanism. First of all, set traps in locations where wild boars often appear, such as areas where they do live or feed. The bait needs to be placed so that it attracts wild boars from outside to inside the trap. This is usually done using foods that wild boars like, such as corn, potatoes, carrots, and others, to monitor the trap performance. A camera should be installed nearby to check regularly and ensure that the trap is operating properly. When wild boars are detected, the trap will automatically activate and capture them. In areas where there are no wild boars, the trap cage will be moved to another area for trapping. For removing the trap, the large round frame trap cage can be towed across different areas using a car trailer. This cage is large enough to hold many wild boars at once, increasing the possibility of catching many in one time. Transporting it also requires quite a few people to increase safety during the transport prices. After moving to a new area or a new location, the trap will be placed permanently on the ground, spreading food to trap wild boars and waiting for them to fall into the trap. This method has proven effective in controlling Canadian feral pig populations Tens of thousands of wild boars are captured by traps each year, and they can be deployed in many different types of terrains, from crop fields to hard-to-reach areas, such as deep forests. Traps are not only an effective solution, but also a sustainable way to manage and reduce feral pig populations. All these wild boars will be harvested for processing and other purposes.
As you know, the wild boar populations are still increasing very rapidly. Even when measures are put in place and implemented, we still urgently need more effective measures to deal with this invasive species. Please share all your opinions down below in the comment section now. Thank you for watching this video until here. For now, allow me to take you to another video to watch. Let's continue watching together. Wild boars are omnivores with a diverse diet, including grass, leaves, fruits, seeds, and even small animals. They are highly capable of digging and use this technique to find food. The omnivorous nature and digging ability of wild boars can have negative consequences for the ecological environment. When born, baby wild boars have light brown fur with black spots on the neck and shoulders and weighs about 20 to 25 kilograms. They can stand and walk immediately after birth and find their own food after about two weeks of age. Although they have lived in their mother's herd, when they reach two years old, they will separate from the herd to find a mate and start their own family. Wild boars can cause great damage to the environment. They dig up tree stumps, turn over grass and soil, which can lead to destruction of tree root systems and thinning of forests, a loss of biodiversity. The world's wild boar population is increasing estimated to be about 100 million, with the majority in Asia being 80% and Europe being 15% and America being 5%. Wild boars also affect forest woodlands by digging in search of food and water, causing ecosystem destruction and hardship for other animals. Although many measures have been taken to control the wild boar population, their numbers continue to increase sharply due to their ability to reproduce rapidly. Tropical, temperate mangrove, broadleaf and coniferous forest areas are all places where feral pigs cause the most negative impacts. The Meinjäger Pro Rigid Panel Feral Boar Trap is not only an effective tool in controlling feral boar populations, but is also a breakthrough with advanced technology utilizing solar energy to bring convenience and high performance. Specific installation instructions and related information below will help you better understand the power of technology and the trap's unique design. Started with assembling the trap panels, each with simple legs for assembly using screws or dowels. Join them together using connecting rods to create the basic frame for the trap. The ability to easily and quickly install is a strong point of the trap. The trap door is located at the bottom and can be opened manually or electrically, providing great convenience and flexibility. This helps improve efficiency and reduces effort required on the part of the user.
The bait is placed inside the trap using foods such as fruits, vegetables, or food that can attract wild boars to increase the likelihood of attraction. This is an important part of optimizing the trap's ability to catch large numbers. The trap uses solar energy through a panel placed on the top, providing power for the trapdoor, motor and signal lights. This model is not only efficient, but also demonstrates a commitment to renewable energy sources. When wild boars approach, the motion sensor will activate the trapdoor, trapping them inside quickly and effectively. This proves the accuracy and quick response of the trap in all situations. Traps are often placed in areas with high wild boar densities, such as forests, fields, and grasslands. This helps optimizing the ability to capture and control wild boar's populations in the most effective way possible. The Jaeger Pro Hard Plate Mine Trap is not only popular in the United States, but is also widely used in many countries around the world, such as Canada, Europe, and Asia. This demonstrates the diversity and flexibility in global application. Each night, Traps are capable of catching 10 to 30 wild boars, making them an effective and sustainable solution for population control. This efficiency not only brings immediate benefits, but also maintains ecological balance. Users can harvest two to four traps per day, creating the ability to control 730 to 1,460 wild boars per year. This demonstrates the trap's versatility and wide applicability. With the Jaeger Pro Hard Plate Mine Wild Boar Trap, it is not simply a wild boar control tool, but also a symbol of modernity and convenience in population management, bringing efficiency and convenience to farmers, users who are passionate about hunting. The Board Buster system uses innovative design with a circular outer and an inner shell to effectively trap wild boars. This overview sets the stage for the assembly and operating details that follow. The assembly process begins with the construction of the inner ring, which alternates doweled and unbolted panels. The trap pins are then securely inserted into the grooves on the inner ring plate. Then the rollers are attached one of which is removable for disassembly. The outer ring is constructed by aligning the panels with rollers and fixing the connections. Finally, the trigger components including the latch arm bar, winch leg and electronic latch are installed. According to a study conducted by Texas A&M University, the board buster system is 80% more effective than some other types of traps. Wild boars can be caught in all sizes, from piglets to adults. This trap also traps the same number as the mine trap. There are a number of other types of wild boar traps to deal with this invasive species. To ensure fairness in the competition, 
the organizers determine specific python catching areas and stipulate the minimum size of pythons allowed to be caught. They also give prizes to those who catch the most pythons or the largest pythons. Prizes can be cash, in kind or other prizes, creating excitement and competition in the contest. In addition to catching pythons by hand, another important method in controlling Burmese pythons is harvesting their eggs in the wild. This is especially important because each python can lay hundreds of eggs in a single laying. But to do this safely, it requires special knowledge and skills along with the use of protective gloves to protect hands from bites. In addition to search for pythons, contest participants need to search in shady and humid places, places where pythons like to rest and hunt. At the same time, they must also look for signs of pythons, such as droppings, crawling tracks, and bite marks on trees. In the process of catching pythons by hand, having help from teammates is very important. One person will hold the python by hand, while the other one will assist from far. Python keepers must always be alert and avoid being attacked by pythons, the remote support person must be ready to help if any problems arise. The python catching contest isn't only a fun activity, but also an effective method to deal with the Burmese python invasion in Florida. We need to join hands and contribute to the protection of native ecosystems, especially in wetlands, rivers, lakes, and forests. As well as places with a lot of waste and leftover food. In addition to python catching competitions, the Florida government also applies many other measures to deal with this invasive Burmese pythons, such as offspring rewards to those who catch pythons and increasing propaganda to raise public awareness. Overall, nocturnal capture of Burmese pythons in Florida is an important measure to control python populations and prevent invasions. However, this isn't simple and has so many potential dangers, so python catchers need to be fully equipped with the necessary knowledge and tools to ensure their own safety and succeed in the task of preventing the invasion, encroachment of Burmese pythons. Using a flashlight to search for pythons is an important part of this process. Burmese pythons are often active at night, but their signs, such as droppings, crawling tracks, and bite marks on trees, can be easily detected with the light from a flashlight. This increases your chances of fighting pythons and optimizes python capture performance. Catching Burmese pythons at night in Florida has many important advantages. This python species is most active at night, so catching pythons at this time increases the effectiveness of population control.
Furthermore, Burmese pythons are difficult to detect during the day. Making catching pythons at night increases your chances of finding more pythons. However, at this time, it could be more dangerous than during the day, as the person catching the python can be attacked by the python, and using a flashlight in the dark can be a challenge. Estimating the number of Burmese pythons caught at night in Florida can range from 20 to 30 percent of the total number of pythons caught depending on the time of year and weather conditions. After being harvested, pythons can be released into the wild or processed into dishes. There are many ways to consume this animal, but first you have to be referred to one of these processing methods. If you are a fan of this animal, we advise you not to try it. This is a challenge for you. It'll take a few hours to enjoy this dish. In addition to controlling catching Burmese pythons, many people now catch pythons to keep them as pets. We do not recommend this as it'll encourage the Burmese python population to thrive and they can be very dangerous to you and other pets when they mature. What will happen if they attack you? That's the worst thing you will ever have to endure. They are inherently a wild species. Their nature cannot be changed in any living environment. To secure yourself, learn how to escape if you are in this dangerous situation. And you should not go alone in areas where pythons often appear to ensure your safety. If there are any other measures that can be used to deal with this animal, please comment them below in the comment section to let us know. And finally, if you truly enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends. And also, don't forget to turn on your notifications bell so you're always staying tuned with any of our upcoming videos. For now, let's continue watching the rest of the video. These pigs roam the fields completely freely, taking advantage of and destroying the months of farming effort that farmers have put in to prepare for the harvest season. This situation not only harms agricultural output, but can also seriously impact local food supplies and agricultural resources. Another impact of the harmful wild boar situation is the heavy pollution of many water sources. Wild boars roaming freely in search of food can lead to digging deeper into the ground and making water sources dirtier and more polluted. This threatens the sustainability of water source systems and ecosystem structures and creates an additional challenge facing farmers and resource managers.
Wild boar hunting in the fields of America is truly a special and indispensable event in the agriculture and hunting culture of this country. Hunters from everywhere gather in the vast grasslands to participate in this sweetie hunt. They not only bring professional and modern hunting equipment, but also unite with the farmers here to negotiate and discuss thoroughly about tactics and how to conduct the hunt. Consensus in planning and implementation is an indispensable factor, ensuring that no wild boar has a chance to escape from the information network and tactics of the hunting team. Hunters must know how to use terrain and information from local farmers to predict wild boar behavior. Hunters require extreme patience and discipline to participate in this hunt. The convoys began to enter the field, each person choosing his own position to observe and hunt most effectively. Hunting dogs play an important role in finding traces of wild boars. They are ready to chase and attack their prey before it has a chance to escape. Hunters in strategic locations will ensure to not have a single pig escaping their skillful hands using sophisticated hunting tools. It is expected that by 2022, there will be about 9.5 million wild boars captured in the U.S. Even though that, the wild boar population is still increasing rapidly, so a series of other measures must be introduced. Wild boars escapes into the surrounding forests, taking advantage of the protection of the natural environment. They are very smart and know how to wait for an opportunity before returning to the field. Cage trapping is known for producing more profitable and cost-effective harvest than hunting. And yes, look at the results. These wild boars will be processed and given to other areas as gifts. What do you think about these methods of dealing with wild boars? Please comment below in the comment section to let us know. And for now, let's explore some other measures to deal with wild boars.
So since these solutions have been affecting and preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below. Plus, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos. And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well. Hello friends, more than 3 million monkeys attacked the city.